The other one I wanted to talk about, and you, you talked about this the other day, but maybe we should just kind of go over it a little bit more okay. because we're just on this topic is, and I think this is the other thing that gets screwed up all the time and put into a, an individual category when it's corporate, it is that whole thing about dwelleth, the spirit dwelleth. Oh, yeah. And the big one is 1 Corinthians 3.16. So let's say dwell or dwelling or dwelleth, right? <coughs> no. Romans 8 is, is, the, is, our, is our one that we really need to concentrate on. That, that The body of Christ needs to understand that in Romans 8 when it talks about the spirit dwelling, that that is in a corporate thing, not yes. an individual thing. That's right. That's right. Even even some good brethren who even see what we see about join Aaron, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of confusion on that. So let's look. Let's talk about that. So First Corinthians three, it's still sixteen, out, yeah. uh, Romans eight. Is it eight nine? Yes. Okay. Let's let's. I'm, I'm going to start with those two. <clears throat> well, let's <clears throat> let's start with. It looks like too. Yeah. Let's start with Romans first. Yeah, because that's that's the one that's really confusing for most. Mm -hmm. and, and okay, <clears throat> in Romans eight again. Just remembering the context, right? Mm -hmm. The context of Romans 8, right off of Romans 7 and so forth, is the, is, it's a sanctification issue. For, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. This is how Paul's going to walk. He's not going to walk under the law of Romans 7. He's going to walk under grace the spirit, the, where the spirit leads him. So the context of Romans 8 is a sanctification issue. Sanctification. Okay? All right. It's so a, it's a practice issue. That's a practice. So let's say practice, right? It's not a justification positional. It's practice. Yeah, a, a, the walk, right? A walk of faith. Walk of faith. Okay. All right. So that, that's the context of the chapter. So we just can't just break in and take it and say, "Hey, that's what they do. That's what they did." So in Romans eight, when he gets down to verse number nine. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not in it. You see what it says, in the, it, if so be, <coughs> if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Okay, he says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, when we talk about dwelling, when Paul, the way, oh, by the way, I forgot one more, Colossians 3. Let the, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I think it's 16. Okay. It talks about dwelling. The issue of dwelling has to do with a, it's a, it's a corporate thing. It's what the body of Christ, this is a corporate, how do I want to say, yeah, let's put corporate. So the context, it's a, it's a corporate thing too. So we want to remember that too. All right, corporate. Notice he says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. This will be the spirit of God dwelling you, Right? Then, then, watch this. Now, if any man have not. So actually, in the verse, Paul starts off with the context being corporate, right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes, now, now, if any man. So then he's going to deal with the individual. But let's deal with the issue of dwelling in you. The issue of dwelling in you, Paul is dealing with the context of corporate. It's the context is sanctification or practice, walk of faith, mm -hmm. things that apply to the body corporate, right? He's not saying that everyone will do this, or everyone will, every individual will, will operate, or what, what we're going to find out, every, not every individual has it dwelling in them individually. And this is just basically <clears throat> uh, something that is elaborating on Romans 8.1 about walking out. Exactly. Right. So I might as well just put one through eight there. Yeah, that's the context. Right. It's walking, it's the walk of faith, walking after the spirit. Yeah. After the spirit. Available for the entire body corporately, but not every individual does. Yeah. Now go over to 1 Corinthians chapter number, the, the, the other passage that we were talking about, 316. 316, yeah. This is the one that often is used to say, well, wait a minute, the Corinthians were carnal, and yet... Here Paul is saying that the Spirit is dwelling in them, so how can that be a, a corporate thing? It must be an individual thing. The problem is they don't know the word ye there. Yeah, I was just about to say, exactly. Verse number 16, know ye, again, that ye, that's, that's plural, right? Know ye, body corporate, know ye not that the Spirit of God, uh, that ye are the temple of God, right? The temple of God is the body of Christ, yeah. not the agency. Yeah. It's a corporate issue. Here, here, here's some verses on that, by the way. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 
And Ephesians chapter 2, I'll give you the, 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 the verses, but uh, the, the actual verses, but those are the chapters. And in both of these, in both of these passages, Ephesians and, and, and uh, 2 Corinthians, well, I'll, 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 well, since we're looking at it, I just want to, because you just said it, we'll, we'll look at it. Right. Ephesians chapter number 2. Look at Ephesians chapter number 2. So we want to see what the temple of God is. It's the body of Christ. It's that agency, right? Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter number 2. Let's just get that on there so that people can see. Ephesians 2. Notice he says down in verse number... Oh, okay. Here's how he says it here. Verse 21. Oh, yeah, there it is. In whom all the building... Oh, that's 1 Corinthians 6. All right, you get to... 1 Corinthians 3.16, earlier in the chapter, he says, ye are God's husbands, ye are God's building, right? Okay, so right there it tells you we're God's building. And then he's talking about the temple. That's earlier in chapter 3, but go, let me go back here. You are building together. Notice what he says, Ephesians 2.21. For whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy what? Temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. There it is. There it is right there. Look at that terminology. Hey, look at that terminology. Have we ever see buildings growing? No. But you know why this building's growing? Because it's people. It's that's right. It's people. It's an organic building. Right. Right. In fact, Paul calls it, "Oh, ye are God's husbandry." Right. Oh man, this is it. No, this is good, Ron. Give, give me a second, because there's so many. In 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 First Corinthians three, just so that people can see. Verse 9, for we are, so that's Paul and Apollos in context, are labors together with God, ye, that's the body, right? Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Okay, check this out. What, what, what verse was that? I, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 3. Okay, so in 1 Corinthians 3, 9. And that's the labor of love, ye are labors together. Yes, this is a labor of love context, yeah. ministry. But then this is a corporate issue too, right? Because not every member labors. Exactly, it's corporate. So in 1 Corinthians 3.16, remember he already set the, the precedent that we're the husbandry, we're the building. That goes to Ephesians 2, right? Look, look at, you said, look at the wording, you're right. Look at chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. All right, just putting it together. In whom all the building... 1 Corinthians 3, 9. Fitly framed together, groweth. You said, how can a building grow? Because it's people, mm -hmm. right? It's that husbandry, right? Mm -hmm. Into a holy temple. So it's a temple. And you know, it's a temple. Holy temple in the Lord. Now watch verse 22. In whom ye also, the body, are built together for a habitation of God so that now, this 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 issue of the habitation where, where God abides, his habitation of God. Now, notice he says through the spirit, through the spirit. Now, when he says through the spirit, that ha that's how he does it. That's why, why Paul talks about the spirit of God dwelling in you corporately. Right. So when he goes to Romans eight, he says the spirit of God, the spirit of God, it's through the spirit, the spirit of God dwells again that's corporate right that's that's everything that he's talking about here husbandry building a building that grows husbandry it's a people it's called a temple it's the habitation of god through the spirit therefore the way god abides in the body of christ is through the spirit the spirit of god dwells or abides that's a corporate thing he's not talking about the individuals there Okay. So yeah, Ephesians chapter one, uh, excuse me, two twenty one and twenty two. When we get to it in the study, we'll bring it up again. So it's the ye, it's the body, it's the agency, corporate. What about the Second Corinthians six? Let's look at the Second Corinthians six. Second Corinthians six. Look at the end. Verse fifteen. He talks about being une not unequally yoked. Start at verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with dark? Just for the people who right here see this. In the context, the Corinthians were going back into those idol worshiping temples and eating with them and, you know, fellowshipping with them. Verse 15. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? 
Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Now watch this. And verse 16, and what agreement hath the what? Temple, temple of the living God. Excuse me. The temple of God with idols. So the first thing I want to show is that you know, for, when we, we already saw the Spirit of God dwells and abides, it's a habitation of God. He calls those saints the temple of the living God. Okay? So that's, that's definitely corporate. The temple of the living God with idols. They were going to idol worship. For ye, okay, there's our word again, ye, plural, body corporate, ye, for ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will do what? Dwell in them. There it is again. I will dwell in them. Key word is them. It's corporate, them. I will dwell in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. That is, that is what the Bible, that's, that's the body of Christ. So, but, so Paul is taking a, a reference from uh, Israel's yeah, program yeah, exactly. and saying that this, this is something that is applicable or, or uh, it, it, it's germane to how yeah. God deals with the body of Christ. Especially, especially in his early epistles, like we saw with the book of Romans. Remember he went back to Isaiah 52 and he takes that snapshot out of that and said, this is an interdispensational principle. Right, this is what's going on in this agency. And notice, well. notice that quote is about the nation of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. All Israel was God's people. And that's what people have to remember. The entire nation was his people. Even when they were in rebellion, they were still his people. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ, even in rebellion, is still God's people, right? It's so, so this is a sanctification, body, agency, corporate issue. He says, now watch this. Wherefore? Because of that, now check this out. Paul does the same thing in Romans 8 that he does in 2 Corinthians 6. He'll use, he'll say, because this is true, right? Because this is what God is doing with the agency, let the individual have a, have a certain mindset, right? All right, watch this. Paul does it. Even in Romans 8, you're going to see Paul say something general about the body, and then he'll say... For I reckon, right? Mm -hmm. I, we can't even get into that today because brothers don't even understand. Like when Paul says, I reckon, he, he, is, he is walking in line with that truth, for, that corporate truth. He's saying, here's your pattern. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, not everybody reckons. Yep. Hold on. Watch this. Romans 8. For I am persuaded, right? Now look at this. So look at this is example. Exactly. Follow me. Follow me. When Paul goes into those personal pronouns like that, especially when he says, I reckon I am persuaded, he's also saying, on the other hand, I would like others to reckon this way. Right. I want others to be persuaded. Mm -hmm. But he also is saying, I know, hey, not everybody's going to reckon this and not everybody's going to be persuaded. Mm -hmm. Because your attitude about suffering matters to Christ. All right. Ooh, this is good. So check this out, right? So he goes from telling you how God sees the body, just like with Paul, it says, hey, won't you be, do like I do, be a pattern. So he goes from the agency to the individual. He's going to do it in chapter 8, verse 9, too. I'm going to get back to that. Here's the agency truth. And then he says, because of that, verse 17, that word wherefore is the key. Wherefore, because of that, what I just told you, wherefore, come out from among them, the them is the unbelievers, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. That, that lines up, Ryan, with if any man have not the spirit, he's none of his, you know, that receiving. How is it that God is talking to people who, who already are saved, right? He's saying, I will receive you. Is he saying that, if, that he hadn't received you? Even though you're saved, no. Well, there's that issue of justification, sanctification, right? right. Position, versus, Position practice. versus practice. He goes from giving you a corporate truth of how God sees you, saying, wherefore, now do what God wants you to do. That's what he's doing. 
In Romans 8 verse 9, go to that one real quick too, because he does the same thing there. This is what confuses people. So good, we'll have this on the record so that people can see it. In Romans 8 verse 9, he does the same thing. <clears throat> but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Notice he changes that to the spirit. He says, if any man. Okay, now he goes to the individual there. You see that? And now he talks about the spirit of Christ. Now, by the way, Paul just called the spirit of God the corp corporally. Here's what I want to say. When he's dealing with the ye, the entire body, corporately, he used that term spirit of God, right? Right. But he purposely didn't call it the spirit of God in the next part of that verse. He calls it the spirit of Christ, right? Because mm -hmm. we want to build Christ in us. That right there, that's the individual thing that you choose to do, any man. Yeah. If you don't have that mind of Christ. That's the mind of Christ, right. The spirit of Christ is the mind of Christ. Now watch this. Sanctification principle, not justification principle. All, exactly, sanctification. Now that takes us to, so everybody got that? That takes us to Colossians 3.16. Let's go to Colossians 3.16. Because this is what Paul is talking about when he says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. We'll go to 2 Timothy later too. But Colossians 3.16, verse 6. Team, 16, Paul, 3.16, pardon me. See, the first word is what? Let. That's, yeah, that's a grace word. That's a grace word, a choice word, right? Mm -hmm. A grace word of choice. This is not something that automatically happens. Mm -hmm. This is something that you allow. And it's not something that's mandatory. No. It's something that you allow, and it's not mandatory for, for, for salvation, right. just in case. Free will, choice, right. or something. Yeah. Not mandatory. So it's the second word. Okay, so let. That's the key right there. Let the word... Of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let me stop right there. So when he says, let the word of Christ, he calls it here the word of Christ dwell. That's what I want to see. If Paul tells us to let it dwell, that's a choice, right? That word dwell there. This is something that it's a choice. That dwell means to abide or to be at home with. There are certain things when he uses the word dwell, particularly with the Spirit of God, that he focuses on the corporate, right? The corporate body of Christ. Here, this is an individual's, how do I want to say, individual's choice to have the mind of Christ with them, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's that whole thing about this thing that is true for the agency, yeah. let it be true for you individually. Right. And just for those who like to look in Ephesians, since their spousal epistles, the, the, the passage in Ephesians that equal this is Ephesians 5, I think 22. Go to Ephesians 5, 22. Here he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Ephesians 12, 5, uh, pardon me, verse 18, 5, 18. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. Now, by the way, let's talk about that. If Paul says, be filled with the spirit here in other places he says the spirit of God dwelleth in you so he's telling them one of them is this one's a choice right here yeah. this is this is equal to let the word of Christ dwell in you say that if it wasn't a choice they didn't go around telling people to be human beings they just right are they just are right. if the spirit just if you're if basically in other words and if you're filled with the spirit already he wouldn't have to tell you to be filled there you go. Right. So good. The spirit was automatically dwelling in you. You wouldn't have to tell you to have to dwell in you. <laughs>